da, da, da. done redirecting to the facebook live page okay great we are getting rolling Yay. so we- in in the event that you da, could da, da. not hear that brief little intro right there. We have got Randy Brown here from the Thunder Horse Descendant. Our broadcast will be starting in just a few minutes here. I'm going to share this video around so that our friends and our groups can see it. And we'll give it just another minute here. And we'll be um we'll be live live. Yay. I'm gonna shake my patina paints. Yeah, shake those patina paints, girl. <laughs> just like your patina paints could be like the new shake to maracas. I know, right? <laughs> shake your patina paints. Shake, shake. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop screen sharing right now. And here we are. Hi, everybody. Yay. Randy Brown, you got to you gotta start us off. How do you start off every one of your Facebook lives? Hello, party people. <laughs> It's Randy for Thunder Horse Descendants. And Sarah James from Jesse James Deeds. And we are here today for an extra, extra, extra special celebrity spotlight with the amazing Randy Brown, as you just said, from Thunder Horse Descendants. Randy, it is so great to have you here today. Randy, I'm so excited to be here. Super excited. I got my coffee. I'm ready to roll. I, I went for tea this morning, which is a real switch, but it's feeling good, actually. Cheers. <laughs> I actually have um, a travel mug. I don't usually, but I thought I better just make sure it stays warm. <laughs> I, I love that. Yes. Yesterday I had my coffee in a travel mug and I was like, oh, well, how, um, how convenient as I was, my boyfriend gave that to me and he was like, yes, yeah, to keep your coffee warm. So it gets you going all morning long. Um, and it really did. So thanks um, to the people that care for that one. And thank you, Brandy, for coming to be here on the show with us today. So guys, Brandy Brown is, she is, I feel like you are all over online. She's got a YouTube channel. She's got a Facebook group, Etsy shop. Like Brandy is just crushing it in terms of jewelry design. Every project you come out with is super, super cool. Um, and you use a lot of Jesse James beads. So it felt like a natural fit for us to start doing some work together here. Um, and it's just great to have you here on the Thursday show. Nice. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I am I am everywhere doing all the things. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, so I do a Facebook Live um, on Thunder Horse Descendant on Tuesday and Friday. And I do that at eight o'clock at um, central time at night. So it's like kind of strange being here in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's morning. I'm usually in the nighttime. Um, and then I put out, I put out uh, two YouTube videos every week. So I do like a Monday and a Wednesday. So I'm just doing stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited here to be here with Jesse James Beans. Yeah, Brandy and Brandy is just talking about her YouTube channel. So we have started doing some YouTube videos. Also, you can find Brandy Brown working with Jesse James Beads on her YouTube channel on Wednesdays. But Brandy has been working with beads for a long time. You have told me a bit about your start with beading. It's really, really cool. Can you tell our fans that are tuning in right now, tell our community, what, what, um, what got you started with beading? How are you here today? Yes. <laughs> okay. so, long story not so long is that I so I grew up in North Dakota and um everybody where I'm from so I lived um right near the reservation uh, I'm an enrolled member of the three affiliated tribes so culturally beating is just 
a thing that everybody does, you know? <laughs> Mostly seed beating um, for the most part. And um, I came from a very rural area. I had never been in a bead store until I was like well into my late twenties or early thirties, like, <laughs> so um, I just did seed beading with aunts and mom and grandma and cousins and all that. And we would make um, basically seed bead or looming projects or any kind of like um, outfits for the powwow, like that type of thing. But as I got older and I went to college, I came out here to Minnesota. I went to start going to college in Minnesota. And um, a girlfriend of mine introduced me to um, the bead store in Taylor's Falls. And I went there and that was the first time I had ever seen anything other than a seed bead for like reality check, like gemstones and you know, Swarovski crystals and check glass. Like I had no idea, no idea. I was just like, hum -de -dum. like, I guess I'm like a country bumpkin or something. Uh, so I go there and I meet um, Diane Ritter. And that's kind of where my bead journey started. Um, Diane has worked over there in Taylor Falls for a long time. And, and I met her and I took a class. And the first thing I ever made that was not seed beading was she taught me how to um, wire wrap a Swarovski crystal pendant. And that was it, that was it. I was like, what? You can use wire? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I, I just learned so much. And then I was trying to learn everything and I was just trying everything and like rules out the window. And that's how I kind of became like, I don't know, a mixed, I consider myself to be like a mixed media type of person. Like I, I just like to use everything. And um, I like to take my components and I like to like make them different to see if I can, it's like a challenge. <laughs> so that's where I learned um, technique uh, for like what you should use on stuff. I learned from Diane. And over there, uh, they were very nice to me. I learned about weed history um, from Beth. Uh, uh, who owns the beat store there and my girlfriend Amber basically just surrounded by artists I um I learned appreciation my friend Amber is so cute she could take like anything and she's like this this thing right here this bead is special because this one is special because no bead left behind I love that but in my journey while I was there not knowing anything I was like you know I really wish there was like <clears throat> you could just get a strand of beads and it, it would have all kinds of different beads on it. And it would be like, but in the same color way, like you could use them in a project. Maybe you're bored that day. You don't feel like matching stuff up. You could just string them up the way they are. Well, here came Jesse James beads with the bead strands. And I was like, yeah, that's what I need. <laughs> Your wishes have been granted. <laughs> I know. I remember asking this question. I'm like, is that not a thing that people do? Cause I, I didn't know I was really uneducated. And uh, anyway, I ended up going back into town and then I became, um, I moved out of my studio and I became um, kind of isolated um, from all these artistic people I'd been around. Okay. And I, well, I better do something. I better like get into some groups on Facebook. Cause I'm, I'm not, I was like never in a Facebook group ever until I was like 30. <laughs> So I started joining the, the I joined the Jesse James Beads uh, Facebook group and I got in there and I joined all the other Facebook groups. And I started seeing all these people who are doing all these things and I was like, yes, I love this. So I decided to start a business in 2018 and I talked to my significant other about it and I was like, hey, Jeff, what do you think? And he was like, well, that's what you want to do. And so here we are. <laughs> here we that, are that is really really amazing and i love the story of your native american roots and just like beads being part of your culture it's part of your your heritage you know from the jewelry to like the decorum that native americans wear is just it's so amazing and we've actually had some fans in the jesse james secret stash that have asked about making native american inspired jewelry so maybe maybe that's, that's something that we could do here another time we just got all these really great seed beads in and thank you for sharing that video yesterday i appreciate that 
Um, but maybe, you know, we have all these beautiful seed beads and like many of us that are in Jesse James beads, we're stringers. Like we come here because we love all the beads that already go together. But perhaps later down the road, after we, you know, have this amazing mixed media day today with Randy Brown, maybe we can ask her to come back and do some, um, some of your cultural familial history type jewelry making for us. I love it. Well, I don't know if we can fit that into an hour, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe it'll have to be like another like special weekend workshop, but my mind is going on. I'm, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> But for today, okay, so Randy's talking about how she went to the bead store and her mind was blown with the Swarovski crystals and the gemstones and then falling in love with Jesse James beads. So Randy has described herself as very much a mixed media jewelry artist. And the project that she has for us today is incredibly mixed media inspired. Tell us a little bit about what we're about. To, tell us a little bit about what we are about to get into. Okay, so grandma said, my grandma, she said, art is taking things that you like and making them into things you love. Oh my gosh. Super simple. So I was like, okay. So I have all these beautiful, like, um, I was really, I was really happy when the seed beads came out because then that means I can do more like wire wrapping with the seed beads from Jesse James. And they, they match this colorway. So I made this necklace because I'm like, okay, I want to make every part of this necklace different because I think that that brings interest, but I also want it to be um, kind of have a theme and kind of be in like colorway. So I did walk on the beach, um, which the Jesse James beach strand walk on the beach is, was like the uh, inspiration for this piece. And so I got this and I really liked it. And I was like, okay, so we're gonna make a whole bunch of different components with different styles using all the styles because no rules. And we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna like make something that I really love out of all these things that I really like. And so that's what I did. Basically. That is really beautiful. I just I just typed your I know you're not seeing the comments. So if anyone has a comment for Randy, please type it and I will relay it to her. She's got just her sole video on there. But Randy, I took your um, I took your quote, art is taking something that you like and making it into something you love. I put that quote right here in the comments and pinned it. So everyone, that that is a good one. That should get like printed on a t-shirt with Thunder Horse Descendant logo on the back. That right there, grandma say. Grandma say. <laughs> infringement, grandma. Grandma's gonna be like, oh, copy infringement. That's that's the the <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, no, I was really excited about this necklace because we get to use patina paints, we get to use seed beads, we get to use Chinese crystals, all the things. It's like, and leather and all the things. And so I'm excited. All right. So should we flip the camera around? You ready to do it? I'm ready. <laughs> I might have to, let me try this. Let me see if this is going to work. It's my first zooming. So excuse me while I flip. There we go. And get situated. Take your time. Cool. Oh, yay. Danielle is on the comments over here for Jesse James Beads. And she just posted a link that has the beauty shot of this project. If you guys want to see where we're going with this, you can click on the link and there's all the supplies for this project. This is this is a do not miss this one. Right do you here. want to see the finished project? Here's the finished yeah, project. Show it to us. Yeah, let's see it. Okay, I'm going to spotlight you real quick. So, bye everybody. <laughs> I think I got it all in there. Yes! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is so cool. Oh, if you're spotlighting me, I don't see it. <laughs> you are, yeah, you are. It is full on you right now. Randy, show us, yeah, hold up the components so you can, so we see we, each component that we're gonna be making in this project. Okay. So we're going to be making, so these are Jesse James. I'm like in this little tiny square, but we're going to be making this nested um, wire wrapped uh, hoop. And then we are going to be making um, all of these wooden components with patina paints. They're all painted. I don't know if you can tell that. I can, yep. And then we're going to be making this guy, this little wire wrapped uh, seed bead guy. He's really fun. He, I think this one is my favorite out of the whole bunch. I love it. And then we're going to be doing a little more wire wrap seed bead. Just, I guess the moral of the story is just to make them all interesting. 
because they're all special. That's the theory is that they're all, each one is supposed to be kind of its own little, you know, own little design. And I'm very much for making things that are all different and putting them together. Like I'm not really, I am not really a matchy matchy person, you know, like matchy match. <laughs> but this is what the end, this is what the end product looks like. And so there we go, the walk on the beach necklace. Oh, and then the leather portion. Love it. The little, with uh. the little, the little um, flowers, which honestly just was kind of a happy accident. Those are, the, those are the um, end caps from the, yeah, show us the strand. So Look this is the strand. strand, trying to focus. And the little end caps are all, were all on there. And I didn't notice till I broke this up and I was getting towards the end and I was like, oh, these are going to be perfect to put on the end of the leather. They really are. I love what you did with that. Yeah. So this is the one we're going to be using. This is the walk on the beach strand. And then you get four of these little, um, these are rosewood rings from Jesse James. And I like that they're drilled. I'm I'm trying to show you. I hope my camera is focusing. They're all drilled. <clears throat> and then we're going to use the new. Well, I don't know if these are new. I guess you would know. Peach sherbet. Are those new? The seed beads. Nope. Mm -mm. Those are from summer. Are they from yeah. summer? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I just restocked them actually. So we're gonna be using those three. And then I'm in debate. I found, I got this little pendant, this little amethyst one, the little amethyst geode one from Jesse James. And I also got that, uh, the one that I put on this necklace. But I think today, just because I like to be different, I might just use this one. But the pendant situation, you could use any pendant you want. Okay, so are we ready? Ready. All right. All right, all right. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is we're going to get our little rose, I'm gonna try not to bump this camera while I'm doing all this business. I gotta shake my patina paints. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Shake, 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 shake. Get some patina paints and That's shake them. <laughs> <laughs> so I love to patina paint everything. So if you're not familiar, um, you can get patina paints on Jesse James as well. Um, so I have a couple of colors and basically I picked out these colors originally because I was kind of trying to make this corally color for the match the pendant or something like it. So this is really simple. This is like the fun, the like super fun part of this little design. <sighs> Don't, no judgment, look. <laughs> my little, my little, uh, palette is just going through it. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure I'm in the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of these little colors, just a smidge. I got uh, rust. That was rust. I've got uh, petalite. And I'm just going to make a little mixy here until we like it. Uh, what's this one? This one is fire opal. Let me just say, I've had problems with fire opal from the jump. I don't know what I did to this. <laughs> this pink, but it just gets problematic all the time. I'm not gonna squeeze it because sometimes it comes flying out of there all inappropriately. Okay, and then I got a little antique copper. So really, uh, whatever color you wanna make, is up to you. I'm going to use a dry brush. This is just a little detail dry brush. You can get a pack of these at the Dollar Tree or Walmart or whatever. Ooh, got a little orange. So that's, we need a little something there. I got to get this pink to work. <laughs> Doesn't want to. Because why would it? Here we go. There we go. Silly fire opal. Ever since I have opened that fire opal, I've struggled. <laughs> so now it's getting kind of corally, you can see. And you can make whatever color you want. I just wanted this one to be a little more coral. And this is like easy peasy. So all you do is I'm gonna paint all of these. You can paint them however you want. 
I'm just going to go in and this, I'm going to put this bottom layer, I'm going to let this dry. And then um, I'm going to go over the top to just put a little uh, details on the top, just little strippy stripes. And this stuff dries super fast. If you're not familiar with patina paint, um, it dries in like a millisecond. So no worries there. Oh, I hear Jake Toes. Anybody who watches Thunder Horse Descendant show, I hear Jake Toes upstairs, my dog. What's his name? His name is Jake. <laughs> is Jake toes when you hear him prancing on the floor? Yeah, we got hardwood floor up there and he's coon hound. He's just like, uh, he's probably like almost a hundred pounds. So he's pretty, gets noisy sometimes. All right, so we're just painting this, la da da, you paint it however you want. You don't have to paint the whole thing. You can just do whatever. I really like these rosewood uh, components anyways, and I wanted to leave some of the wood, you know, for like the beach theme, you know what I'm saying? So you just want to make sure that you're not painting over your little holes. You don't want to plug them up. Whenever you're using patina paint, make sure you wash the brush out immediately. I don't know how many brushes I've killed with that. Okay. Then I'm going to use a little bit of this rose gold. So I'm using a metallic <clears throat> to do the, you could use, I would suggest using metallic for the, um, the little details because it stands out pretty good. So it's just a smidge. Oh, that was more than a smidge. Okay. <clears throat> Then you take your other brush. That one has water on it. I don't want water. Take a dry brush. And then you just go in with your little detail work. Start back at the beginning. I want to knock some of that off so it's not so like abrupt. Hope you guys are seeing this. I'm in this little tiny camera. And then you can just you put make them as little or as big as you want. So cute. Wow, I love how that patina paint really transforms those wooden rings. Right? See, that's the fun part with mixed media. <laughs> that's really that's cool. the fun part. Because then you can make it your own. Make it your own. Make it as individualized as you want. Super fun. So you just put that on there. And you could do like little dots if you wanted. They don't all have to be the same. My my paintbrush is shedding. There we go. Could do little dots, could do whatever's. You could also, uh, you know, you could put a little water on there and do like more. If you put a little water on, it's gonna give you more of a, like a washed look instead of like a, detail kind of look depends on what you want to do but i'm making sure that i'm hitting the sides here on the on the round part because those are going to show and you don't want them just everything else to be painted and then that to just be like meh <laughs> you know <laughs> so anyway just gonna jazz this up a little bit and then we will start working on putting the beads inside of them. And when I made this necklace originally, um, I, I did each component as like its own little project. And if you're a person who's like, um, you just want to do a little project. It's really fun. And I do this a lot. I got to get a little more paint for this guy. It's really fun. Like if you just want to um, jazz up your components and then leave them, you know, till you got them all together and then put them together. I do that a lot. Cause I'm like, Oh, I just got this little 15 minutes and this is gonna make these little rings. And then there's not so much pressure to make like the whole thing, you know? So 
if you like that kind of thing, these little projects are fun to do. And you could even get your, you know, babies or your grandbabies involved if you trust them with the paint. Jazz some stuff up. That would be really fun to make a necklace where you get your family involved and everyone just makes a couple components for it or everyone makes one component and then you can make one full piece. Yeah. See, I got to do a little something for this. It looks a little too uniform for me. You see that? <laughs> like, no, this, is you. this one side is going to be going to be rose gold. OK, so. Sarah, you're going to have to keep me on the time situation because this project can be a little bit time consuming. I'm, I'm seeing that, yes. <laughs> We're at 1130 right now, but before we can go a time seat over. Okay. Okay, so these are probably already completely dry. You can put glaze on them if you want. I don't. They do have a patina glaze. I do not glaze most of the things that I patina paint. I mean, for the most part, as long as you're not wearing it in water or like every day of your life or whatever, it's going to be fine. So this is the walk on the beach strand from Jesse James. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a couple of these little, um, little bowls so I can better show you the beads, but also so I know where everything is. Okay, so these are the larger beads. And I really liked these. I think these are just glass beads or maybe they're ceramic. I think they're glass. These ones are stone. And then this like really cool mother of pearl, which was kind of the the focal point of why I was like, oh yeah, beach. <laughs> and then all the little odds and ends. And so the cool part about this is I used every single bead. Great. I love how you take the strand and just ripped it apart. A lot of times people will be like, oh, I don't know what to do with this strand, like, because it looks so pretty all set up the way that it is. And you just got on in there, tore that thing up, and you showed that strand who was boss. Yeah, I'm doing the same to the pendant. That's what they're <laughs> for. That's what they're for. It's like sometimes, I mean, not all the time. I, I just, I don't know. I feel like some people get the beads and they're and they're like really pretty and they just want to have them and I'm like but you but you could make something with them and then and then they would be out in the world living their life. <laughs> but I have some beads like that too and I'm like oh I just don't know what I want to do with it yet. So I hang on. I do I hoard I hoard beads. Okay. So this strand does have mixed metal on it. Um this guy has a silver. So um, the other pendant I used in the photo had a gold, but this one has silver on it, but I don't care, no rules. We need a medium link. So this is the big girl strand. I'm still using it. If you've been following along, <laughs> if you've been following along with Thunder Horse Descendant, I have used this one Jesse James big girl strand on, I don't know. I don't even know how many projects. Still got tons left. Still I loving. Love, I love how you've taken that chain and used it as as links for jewelry making. Yes, it's super good. And I've even found ways to use the ones that I've cut off. Okay, so here's my pendant. I just I cut off the bail it came with because I wanted to use an oval jump ring because I'm obsessed with oval jump rings. And I'm just putting this onto a medium one of the medium links from the big girl chain. And that is our pendant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna whip up all the components um, before we start putting anything together. So I have my 22 gauge artistic wire. I'm gonna be using this for all of the wrapping, except for when I use 24 gauge on, um, on the beaded links. So on these two, on these two, on this one, I'm gonna use 24 and on this one, I'm gonna use 24. All the other ones for these, we're going to use 22. 
And I guess we better get to wrapping so we're not sitting here all day. <laughs> okay, so first things first, we are going to take one of our, I got about, I got way too much wire. I don't know if you guys, I'm a, I always have too much wire. It's probably like four inches, that's too much. But I'd rather have more than not enough. And we're just gonna start wire wrapping these links. So I'm gonna go around three times. And I'm not gonna show this every time. I just assume you guys probably know how to make these by now. <laughs> Give this tail a little tuck in. And I'm going to make all of the components. Um, I'm going to hook them together with jump rings. So I'm not going to link them together. I'm going to use a cold connection. And if you want to link them together, by all means do that. But I am going to just get them all ready and then link them together with oval jump rings. Um, simply because I feel like for my personal style, it gives the necklace a little more um, movement. And I like that. So not everybody likes that. Okay, so for this first one, we are going to use these little uh, cups. Um, what I like about these is that, so I got my loop on there. I went through one side of the, of the wood. You're gonna take your bead cover and put it on here. Now, before you bring this down, watch this. You put it on there and you squish it. So it goes flat to the bead. And since it's such a like a thin little metal, it'll conform to your bead and it'll look really nice instead of it just sitting on top like that. So gotta use you gotta use your power. <laughs> squish it down. So let me just bring this down. And I'm gonna stick a little tiny. So I got my seed beads out here just to save a little time. I'm gonna stick one of these little gold seed beads in with this just so that it doesn't move around so much on the top there. Okay. And then you gotta back your wire out and get yourself, oh, my CB fell off. Get on there, you. And get yourself lined up with that hole in the wood, okay? And then we just finish it up. Give it a little snip. Wow, that beaded link is perfect. I love, guys, did you see what Randy did there? So she put the bead in the middle, but because there was a little bit of extra space, she used a seed bead to fill up the space so the bead isn't going all jingly jangly inside there. Mm -hmm. It looks awesome. And that patina paint is killer. <laughs> really cool. So there is one. And we have four others to do. So quickly, <laughs> I'm going to whip them up. And it's the same process, um, just using different beads. Now, the way that I did these beads, I used all of them from the strand so that I could utilize all the beads. Um, you could reconfigure them so that you could, you know, have them any way you want, really. But I just liked it because I was able to use all of the beads. And so on some of them, like this next one we're going to do, I used a stone bead. 
I gotta put my ring on. Don't forget to put your ring on. Put your ring on. Stone bead. And then I used a spacer, one of these little spacers that came along, a little rondelle spacer. Stuck that in there. And it kind of just depended on what was going to fit inside the ring. You know what I mean? So then you just got to line up your self with the other side of the ring there. Pull through, finish this guy up. Oh, Randy, your friend Diane Ritter is here. She just chimed in and said hello. Diane, nice Yay. to see you. Hi, Diane. I'm over here doing all the things and stuff. Yeah, my mom called this. I told her, I said, oh, you're going to be on the thing today. And she has to work. So my mom is doing her uh, internship at the um, at uh, one of the prisons in Arizona. So she's not able to have her home. Oh, wow. <laughs> I guess not. She'll have to catch the replay. I know. I did my internship when I went through school um, for mental health and addiction counseling. I also did mine in the prison, the Stillwater prison. And yeah, you're not allowed to have any of that stuff. <laughs> but my stepdad called this morning to be supportive, so that was good. Well, so good. If, if many of you don't know, my company, Thunder Horse Ascendant, is named after my stepdad. Hey, Randy, do your, your, say something again. Your audio just got a little funky there. Oh, I said uh, I named my company after my stepdad. Yeah, it's still a little tinny. Tinny. Yeah, you sound far away. Uh oh, that's not good. I see. Let's see what I can do. Do so maybe a little, a little adjusting. Maybe some adjusting. Is that better? No. <laughs> no. Do you have a microphone in? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can. We'll give Randy a quick second while she adjusts her microphone. Oh, there she is. Is this better? Can you hear me now? We can hear you. It just sounds kind of far away. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I think, I wonder if it's because, let me check the, uh, because when I called in, when I called into the meeting, I'm using Wi-Fi as my sound. Do you think maybe that has something to do with it? Maybe, I don't know. It's not, it's not horrible. We can still hear you. It just was a, a switch from, from your normal Randy. Oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> don't know what to do about it. I think that, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like we're, you're on a radio talk show host. Like it sounds like you're on a radio talk show and you're the, you're the call in. Special guest. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't sound as like clear as the talk show host, but you can still hear everything you're saying. So I say, let's just keep on going. Show us what you're making. I'm going to take my video off so we can really focus on your beads and what you are doing on the screen. Okay. The show must go on. The say. show must go on. Continue almost. Well, we should just let we should just let Sarah just uh what do they call that? Narrate. <laughs> and next you will see Randy create a wire wrapped loop. We've got beaded links. <laughs> I foresee another one of coming. Yes, got one left. <laughs> then we get to move on to the fun part. <laughs> These beaded loops are so cool. I just like, 
we um we put these rosewood links up on the Jesse James Beads site. Da Danielle, if you're still in the comments, if you could drop a link to the rosewood, that'd be great. We put those links up um probably two weeks ago, and man, oh man, what the patina paint and some cool beads in the middle does to them. It's like completely transformative. Oh, this one's weird. I forgot. So I did these three, I just put beads in the middle, as you guys just saw. This one, I did wire wrapping on the outside. Ooh. So I got a, I'm not gonna put the seed beads on cause we don't have a gazillion years, but I'm just gonna wire wrap on the outside. And so what I did is I took a longer piece of wire, like mm, probably eight inches. And I'm gonna start my loop and Hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> you sound great. Yeah, just keep on going. Don't even worry about it. And I got my loop started, and I'm going to put a rondel on first because I took my tail. So I'm going to take one of these little sparkly rondels and I'm put that on there before I put on um, the wood link. So that when I, because this kind of has a bigger hole. And so when I go through there, it's gonna look like that. And then what Ooh, we're gonna do is we're just cool. gonna wrap around, no beads in the middle, we're just gonna wrap around like so. Until we get over here to the top. And with 22 gauge wire, it's a little stiff, but it's totally doable. And I really love how at the beginning of the show, Randy said that the way that she beads is she is a no rules beater. And I think that this component that you're doing right here, Randy, really falls under that no rules, um, that, that, I don't know, the, that no rules rule. The no rules rule, yeah, the no rules rule, for sure. No rules rule. <laughs> for most, so of funky. My, most of my stuff is no rules. I'm like, you do what you want. And I think that that just comes from the fact that, I don't know, I learned most of the rules from our friend Diane, and then I'm rebellious. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, meh, I mean. Grandma said I could do whatever I want. She said, just do that if that's what you want to do. Your grandma so, is like a really cool lady. Oh, she's the coolest. I was lucky. I always had really supportive people. I'm just going to finish this up. I always had really supportive people around me. Like my significant other, he continues to just be like, oh, with your never ending changing dreams. You know, I want to be a drug addiction counselor and I want to be a mental health counselor. I did all that. And I was like, I'm going to start a beating company. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and my mom and all those people. But my grandma, for sure, she's just like, yeah, just do it. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. Okay, so with your rings, with your rings right there, do you have your... Do you have the loops on the outside of those links, like rosary style, one going one way, the other perpendicular? Or is it just however the loops, the wire up loops are laying is good for you? Well, they're just however they're laying right now. And then when we go to construction, we will straighten them all out. So when we do construction, we will put them, you can put them, I put them all one way, you know, cause you can just give it a little twisty twist. Mm -hmm. But for right now, they're just, they're just however they are. <laughs> okay. In the interest of saving time, I'm going to show you guys this situation. So this is what the um, the finished uh, seed beading uh, link looks like. This is super easy. Um, and I'm going to show you, you just take one of the big girl, the large big girl uh, chain links. That's what that is under there. And you take your seed beads. I use these ones. I did a pattern. Don't do a pattern. Nobody needs to do a pattern. There's no reason for a pattern. <laughs> Put them in your bead spinner and just spin them on there. Because, yeah, I mean, if you want to get crazy like me and make a bead pattern, you can. 
So I put this on 24 gauge wire. I have about a foot of it. Um, and then I've left mm, about five inches or so blank. And the reason for that is when you go to wrap these around, so these are just your seed beads. I put three of each color in the pattern. And when you go to wrap these around on your link, it's really gonna eat up the wire. But if you want it, you can tell between this one and the one that I put on here is that I had a little more control with this one because it looks a little more uniform than with this one that just looks kind of uh, not as uniform. And I'm gonna show you why. So to start this, all you do is, I already have my seed beads on this 24 gauge wire. And I'm going to go to this end where there's no beads. I'm going to cut off this little knot that I made to keep them on there while I was putting them on there. And just like I started here, it's the same process. And I'll show you how to do it. It's real easy. You just stick your wire in there and just wrap around like so. And I am going to go over the top of my, my other um, link my other wraps here. The reason that I did it in two parts instead of just doing one is because you don't want to try to be putting two feet of wire through this link because it just becomes a tangled mess. And also when I went to put it on the necklace, I'm going to put an oval jump ring right here and I needed it to have a place to fit, if that makes sense. That's a really good tip, Randy, about working in two different sections on this piece rather than just one big one because two feet of wire going around a one inch loop is probably get kind of annoying. Right. Actually, you're probably going to see it get kind of annoying with one, like not even like one foot. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so once you got it on there, all you do is just wrap it around. But here's the tricky trick. You got to make sure your beads are pushed you gotta push them down and make sure they're tight when you're wrapping and you're gonna spin the ring and your wire. So let me get this kind of started so I can be, show you better. Cause this first part is kind of wonky. Because the longer this wire is, the more out of control. That's why I'm like, uh, you know, it, it gets kind of problematic. This wire's got a mind its own. What? I said this wire's got a mind of its own. Oh, I thought you said, I wish you had a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I didn't say that at all. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're good. It's like, it's, it's like I said, it's like, it sounds like we're doing a radio talk show. Okay. I like the vintage vibe of the radio talk show. I don't even know why. Yeah, vintage vibes. Cool. So I'm just bringing this around and, um, you can be like, you know, as precise with this if you, as you want. But what's important is that when you're wrapping the bead is that you're turning the link and you're keeping your beads tight. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with wire where you want beads to be. And that's what happened to me when I made the first one, which is how I came up with this tip. <laughs> but yeah, so you just, whoa, whoa, watch out for your eyeballs. But the shorter your wire gets, like the easier this whole thing is going to get. So it's like you just have to get through a couple of those loops. Ooh. Yeah, you do. In my opinion, like if you're not on camera and you know, all these people watching and you're, you know, just hanging out at your beat desk, it's not, it's like, oh, this is fine. Um, but yeah, it, I think the payoff is really nice. I like the way it looks. I really like it on this necklace. Awesome. Like you, Randy sent, Randy sent me and the team at Jesse Gibbs Beads a picture of her necklace a couple days ago. And I opened my inbox and saw this sitting there. I was just like, whoa, all these components are so cool. Is that patina paint? Wait, did she make her own seed beaded textured ring? Yes, she did. Uh, and here we are watching you do it. <laughs> Yeah, so agree with you that the payoff is totally worth it. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it. I'm just like, yeah, what are we gonna do? Make these 
I don't know. I just really wanted to make all of the components. It's kind of channeling my friend Amber. She's always like, this one thing is really spectacular. And I'm like, you know, I want to make all the components their own little pieces of art. You know, they're all special. And I think like when you go to the beach and you or to the river or wherever you go to see water and you find like stones or little treasures, they're all special, but they all make up part of that day. You know what I mean? I totally know what you mean. It's like little tokens of remembrance when you're, you know, at the beach or at some place where you're totally unwinded. And, yeah. um, and it's really cool when you can have a piece of jewelry that's got all these different unique um, facets to it. It has all these different unique components to it because the wearer of the jewelry piece, whether it's yourself or whether you're selling it or giving it as a gift, the person that then gets to enjoy that piece of jewelry is like wonder as their eyes are spinning over the entire piece. Yeah, and I think it's kind of nice because it's like, you know, not just the pendant is cool, you know, not just the, you know, there's all these little like design elements. And I think that's what makes this, these types of components really fun is because they can all be, you know, they can all be the star of the show. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally does. It's, everyone has that. Each one has their own personality and their special yeah. in individual way. Uh oh, was that me with my notifications on? Probably. Okay. See, so as I said, I like to have way too much. You didn't need that much, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut these off and I'm going to take these, these seed beads off. I'm going to put them over here so I don't get in our way. Oop. One second. Okay. Or you just throw them all over the place. You know, whatever you think is best. Okay. So <laughs> no where you love to live on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I'm like okay or you could just go wherever so here <laughs> is where I'm going to end this which is just again really simple like you're just wrapping around here and then once you get it wrapped a few times till it matches up with that wire that you started you know in the first place um, you're just going to cut it I cut mine in the inside and then we're going to squish it down with a wire easy peasy it's not gonna go anywhere and you just squish it same on this side and now you know and mine's not completely <laughs> perfect but well you know what is um so now i have a place for that oval jump ring to sit in both sides when i link it into the necklace really cute next up how you put your seed beads in a pattern too, Randy. It gives it, that's a different look than how it would look if it was just randomized. Yeah. Oh, you like that? It's, a, I was like, oh, I better, I better maybe put these on here. And then I was like, I want to use all of them. But I, I don't know. I could have just put, you could just put them in the bead spinner and like spin them up. Um, no, I need a medium link for our next thing. Our next thing is a messy wrap. Oh, sorry. Is a messy wrap. If this like, if you're just cringing when I'm cutting this uh, chain apart, just look away. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. About it. Don't even worry about it. Fine, fine, fine. So you're gonna use a medium link. You're gonna get your 24 gauge wire. So it's been 22 gauge this entire time, right? Except for now. Nope. This one is 24 as well. Yeah, because you'd have a real hard time wrapping with your little seed beads on the 22. So we're going to use 24. Now, here's the deal. You need kind of a lot of wire for this to do all this wrapping. So I would say at least two feet. But it's kind of the same situation where, um, you know, if you need to add wire into this component, it's not gonna matter because you can hide all that in your wraps. So if you feel more confident working with a, a shorter amount of wire or whatever, by all means, just do that. Just make it easy for yourself. So I'm just wrapping this on here. And then we're gonna squish it down. And I'm gonna bring this little guy around here. 
squishy them down. And I have all of my wire wraps on this side over here. But uh, in order for it to be a little more um, stable, I'm going to start wrapping that way. So I'm going to go over the top of those wraps. And let's see, I need three of these little sparkly, what are, you guys, what are these called? Are call them galaxy beads. Galaxy beads? Okay. Three galaxy beads, two gray crystals, and one white crystal. I love the colors of those gray crystals, by the way. That's like one of my favorite neutral channels. Yeah. I love, I love gray. Gray is one of my favorite colors. My significant other always tells me gray is not a color. Yeah, I was not mad about the Pantone colors of the year, that ultimate gray and that bright illuminating yellow at all. <laughs> okay, so I put my bead on, galaxy bead on there. I flipped this over. So now I'm going on top of my links and you guys can see that. And my wire is coming from the back. So I'm going to first go down through the front. Okay. So you're going to bring all your wire through there. And you're just going to wrap around one, maybe two times, depending on you feel. I'll do two right here since it's the beginning. And then you only need one or two wraps right there. So you got your got this on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go around the bead about three times, okay? And that's all you do. Then you come back to, you know, right here where you started, you go through here, pull it through, I'm gonna go around three times to give it spacing. Now, my spacing in the original necklace that I made was way off, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm gonna do three wraps right here. Because again, this is not supposed to be like, I just heard a crash, super a, uh, symmetrical or anything, this whole necklace. Uh oh, I got a kink in my, got a kink in my wire. All right, so then I'm gonna put on another galaxy bead. And, That's what you do. If you just turn these, you know, give yourself enough wire to where you can kind of turn them so that they would be setting on top of the link, then you can get them to kind of form that way. And then again, if you're starting from the back, you go down through the front. You only have to go one or two times to tack it down. And then you're gonna go or nesting. This is called nesting, they tell me. You're going to go around three times more if you want. The more you do, the more you see you're going to, what, that's what you're going to get. I'm just going to do it three times and we're going to keep going. And that's all you do around this whole bit. I think, I think maybe I need to go. Maybe about five times here in the in-between. Maybe that'll help my spacing. We'll try it. Maybe it won't. Who knows? I'm going to do a gray one. Get down there. That one was being complicated. Nobody's surprised. Okay, so this is coming from the back. So we'll go down through the front. And I think that that is the way that I have started this. So I think it'll always be that way. Tack it down, spin it around. I always feel like I'm doing workout videos. <laughs> Tack it down, spin it around, give it a snip, tuck it in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my goodness. So just wrap this little guy up. And again, this is one of those little pieces. Where the, oh, goodness. Hold on. One of those little components 
that if you were just sitting around by yourself, you could be as messy or as precise as you want with this. Like if you wanted it to be, you know, exact spacing and all that, you know, you could. But it's just personal preference, really. Do, do, do. Yeah. It's such a cool component. What's you that? This is such this is such a cool component. You could make an entire necklace just out of these really cool funky links that Randy's doing right now. Girl, I totally thought about that. <laughs> I did. I considered it. I was like, hmm. I, I can't I can't even think of what exactly they remind me of. This like really funky, like wire wrapped, messy kind of art deco-ish. Yeah knobby component it's awesome yeah i thought about doing a whole necklace or maybe a bracelet i think a bracelet would be fun i think for a bracelet you might want to use a little heavy duty or wire maybe but you know maybe do it with the 22. i think if you did this with 22 it would even be a little more chunky and that could be really cool yes. or if you wanted to use multicolored like wire to do the little nests, that would be cool. This is how I get into these situations. I'm always like, oh, this is cool. What can we do to make it different? <laughs> All right, this is our last bead. Let's go around here a couple times. And then wrap it around. I'm gonna do extra on that one. And then down here, and then here's a cool thing too. If you wanted to, you could use this extra wire that I have here, you could wrap around. This is also, if you have broken links, you know, like, cause you're cutting links off your big girl chain, you can use broken links to do this. Cause you're gonna wire wrap over the top of them and it doesn't, it, you just wire wrap it back up. It's no big deal. That is it. really handy. So that, do you hear what Randy just said, guys? So Randy's working off of links from the big girl chain from Jesse James Beads. And what she was saying is to, 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 to be able to separate the links from the chain, you have to cut it. Um, they are fully soldered around. But she was saying that you could use the cut link, like make a careful cut in your link to separate the chain from itself. You can use that cut link to do these wire wrap links because the wire is going to cover it and it's going to attach it back together. That's so smart. Yes. Reuse, recycle, reuse. <laughs> so you don't have to do this. What I am doing is I'm just using this extra little tail to go around and give it a little more nesting. You don't have to do this. You could leave it just as it is. Uh, but I just didn't want to waste up all this wire. So I just thought, oh, I'll just do a little more. This one will just have a little more nest on it. It's no big deal. I love the extra knobbiness that the wire does. I know, right? <laughs> I think it's so fun. I would do a whole necklace with this. I really would. And you could just think of all the things with all those little crystals and all those little different beads, you could just, you just put whatever kind of beads on there. Yes. Let's see it up close. Huh? Oh, guys, how cool is that? Oh my goodness. Looks awesome. Really okay. fun. Okay. These two, we're almost there. What's the time situation? You're good. We're good. We're five minutes past 12. Okay. Time, take it away. Okay, so now we have these done, and then we're gonna wire wrap our big. I think all we have left is wire wrapping, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, all we got left is wire wrapping. So we're gonna go back to our 22 gauge. We're gonna wire wrap up the rest of our beads here, and then we'll put it together and add leather. And you know what's so funny? The leather part is like the easiest part of the whole neck. It's like the quickest and the easiest part, the last part. Okay, so I'm just wire wrapping. Everyone is loving this, by the way. You're doing I great. Can't, I can't see anything. I'm glad you guys are having a good time. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tuck in my tail. I'm really weird about this whole tail situation. Like, I, I don't want it to ever poke anybody. I get real paranoid about it. So uh, you put that on there for your mother of pearl bead. And I 
specifically hung this one in the front because like the one of the very first ones next to the pendant because I felt like this was kind of the focal design uh inspiration for this whole walking on the beach doings <laughs> I was like you got to go in the front for sure so he's in the front so look it kind of goes like four two we got our pendant and then we got to have what is it um a few of these <laughs> five of these i think six maybe all right but I've, I've considered like have you ever timed yourself on how fast you can like make a wire wrap loop never uh, i think that sounds murderous i think I'm like, I'm probably, I could probably, I don't know. Some days my hands don't work in the morning. So, I mean, like I have to make like a practice piece. So I, I made myself these earrings I'm wearing. I don't know if you guys saw me. So I was like, I better make sure these, these hands are working today. Cause you know, it's, it's blizzarding here in Minnesota. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. So it's cold and that always affects the beating situation. Now I do have one spacer star I'm gonna put on here because because this guy right here had a little bigger hole and I just don't want him to go flying off. So I'm gonna use two little star spacers. You could use a seed bead, you can use whatever. I'm just gonna use these two little star spacers. Yeah, it's blizzarding. We're supposed to get like, I don't know how many inches of snow today. Clouds are out to like nine degrees. You know. that, that sounds like good. Stay inside and beat up some beautiful things, weather to me. <laughs> sounds like uh, why don't you take a walk on the beach? Which is why <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if we were on the beach? That's how this was born. Okay, we gotta have two of these little gray crystals and one of these big sparkly rondelles, which I really love. And these are gunmetal. So again, like I'm doing most of this in gold, but it's a mixed metal because my pendant is silver. We got some gunmetal spacers. This one has silver on it, so I'm fine with it. And quite honestly, I think that it gives this piece for being mixed metal, it gives this piece like kind of a little more character. Because if you were walking on the beach, all the things you would find would be different, you know? I love that attitude and your spirit, Randy. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, and but I'm also a no rules person. And also and also that Randy is a no rules person. <laughs> and also Randy's like, oh great. That's great. You know, you know. I used to not be like that. I used to get really weird. I don't know what happened to me. I used to get like, I used to be like, why would we mix metal? And then I started doing it. And then I was like, oh, never mind. Never mind, I get it. Oh, what's that mean? Oh, that was me. That was me. <laughs> My my computer sends my text messages through my computer, and I have I do not know how to turn them off. So sometimes um, sometimes they'll be rapid fire, ding ding dings, and I apologize for that one. But uh, one one thing today, and that was from me. Random fire, she says. That's hilarious. Sometimes when I'm doing my Facebook lives, I'll be rendering YouTube videos in the middle of my Facebook live. My it'll like render, and then it starts to play by itself. And then I'm like, oh, let me go turn that off. Here's a fun one. I'm gonna do on this stone. So I'm just gonna do like a regular wire wrap and then I'm gonna twist this wire down around it. And hopefully if I have enough, which I always have extra, so I don't know why I wouldn't have enough. I think that's one of the reasons I'm always using extra wire is because I don't, I don't always have my uh, plan planned out until I'm doing it really. You know, beetle on artistic wire is actually very affordable. So for like those that are getting started, or if you just like to have a, a little bit of extra wire, because it really does make things easier when you're doing your wire wrapped loops. Um, the artistic wire is a really good value. Ooh, look what Randy's doing here. 
We're going to go around the other side. Getting twisted. It's getting twisty. Just hold it down with your thumb. Super cute. Oh, little something. Because, you know, everyone's got to have a little something. Okay, what's going on with my cutter? Oh, the other day I was trying to make something and I had my old cutter over here for some reason. I don't even know why it was here. I was like, what are you even doing here? <laughs> All right, two left, you guys. Two left. All of these links are so cool looking. They're all so different. Isn't this fun? So you could like do this just like when you have time is like what I'm saying. Like when you have time, you can just like make some components and then put them together however you want. Like when you feel like it, you know, sometimes I don't always feel like doing the whole project. This is why I have a box over there full of like projects that are just not finished yet. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, we'll get to that. Okay, here's another one. We're going to do the same with this little guy. And these are so fun. I really like, I really like these little uh, Tibetan things where you can like put them on there and then squish them to form to your bead. Because even if you don't have a big bead, if you had a smaller bead, it's still going to conform, you know what I mean? And it looks really it looks really nice. Those are bead caps that show up on some of our Jesse James Boho beads also. And it's really cool to have them just solo flying right here in the strand, because like Randy said, you can put them around that larger bead or a smaller bead and they just kind of squash to whatever shape you need them to be. Yeah. And then it looks like it's just on there like that. Looks like it's supposed to be like that, you know? Mm, yeah. It looks like it's already on the bead, just like the way the Boho beads have them already attached. Yeah. Super cool. Okay, that's that one. One left. Move on to construction. Which is like the easiest, quickest part. <laughs> okay, so this next one, I, I kind of had like a few beads left, and I'm like, all right, we'll just put those and make those a link. No big deal. Easy peasy. So I got a galaxy bead left. See, I considered putting this one on, on this guy, but I thought, oh, that's getting too much black. <laughs> I've got a large rondo, and then I've got a white crystal. I guess it's not even really white. It's kind of got some AP finish on it. It's got a little pink to it, I think. Yeah. Looks like from back here anyway, next to your pink bead mat. And that's all we got left is the four little flowers caps that we're gonna put on the leather. Randy, you did this strand some justice, my friend. I love it. And you know, we started doing, um, you were talking about our, our mixed bead strands at the beginning of the live. Jesse James Beads started doing these mixed bead strands because we had all these beautiful, beautiful beads. And we found that when we put them into a bead mix, like in a packaging like that, that some of the beautiful beads got lost. So then we just started stringing them up on a string in even numbers with one focal bead in the middle. Not necessarily so that you, they would all be strung that way and that would be it, but just so that you would be able to see so that the customer, so that the creator, the designer would be able to see all of the pretty beads that were inside that set and how they go together. And here they are, look at them going together. <laughs> Yeah, they really are. I got those at the Dollar Tree. And you know what? I went here, I went over there to get some more, and somebody must have had the same idea because they're all gone. Look at my little toe hook. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I love those. Okay. <laughs> the light, bulb, light bulb is going off in my head again. All right, now we go to construction. So once I have all these done, I got my jump rings out here. I'm going to use round jump rings. Let's see. Okay. So we start with the pendant. And I just put the pendant, whatever pendant you got, you just put that on the medium size, big girl length. And I'm using an oval jump ring for that, just so it hangs good. 
And what I'm going to do is I am going to take, so I got all my little links here. And you can put them any way you want, but I'm going to go like this and like this to start out with. The reason that I'm putting a small one here next to this larger one is so that when they're hanging and you're wearing it, you don't have two large ones here competing for the space. Because you are putting this on a link and it is going to slide around. I'm just using a jump ring here. And you don't want two bigger beads trying to compete for that space because they're going to try to knock each other out. That makes sense. They fight. Just don't do it. <laughs> they're going to knock each other out, she says. <laughs> they are. They're going to get into an argument and somebody's going to say something. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. <laughs> see, now imagine if it were two big beads. Just right. We'll see. And then, so then when they hang, they're going to be, it's going to have space. Then I'm going to put this guy and I'm going to put this guy. So once this is hanging, you should have enough space. No, I'm not going to put this. I'm going to put this one. Again, because we're still pretty down here, pretty low in the necklace and we don't want fighting. It's like to meet the jerky in the car. That is a really great design tip. Randy, that's really great design theory tip about when you're laying out your necklace like this and you're putting your different components together to make sure that the beads aren't going to be too big and compete for space when the necklace is laying um, on either flat or on a body. Yes. Well, because it's different when you put a, I'm going to use an oval jump ring to connect this because there's a lot of stuff going on here. If you can see, so I'm going to use a larger 10 millimeter oval jump ring. Um, it's different when you put, when you have it flat than when you wear it, you know, because you got gravity, you got all these other things going on and it's like, you gotta be prepared. So I even know people who they design on like a bust or something. I don't, but a lot of times I'll put it on the necklace hanger deal just to see if it's, you know, trying to be crazy. Okay, next, we're going to put this guy. And now that we're a little further out, and this is going to be because, you know, it's going to be V'ing up around your neck, I think it's fine to put on these two um, link, wood, wood, the, the wooden links, because they're not going to be competing for space because it's going to be V'ing up. Again, on this this guy right here, I'm using this oval jump ring just because it's big enough to get around all that. And most of you who know me at all know that I'm a firm believer in the oval jump rings because they do, they disperse the weight. It makes the weight never on the weakest part of the link, which is where the cut is, because it's not designed that way. Ah, I just thought that oval jump ring looked cooler. I didn't realize that there was a fun function behind that cool looking form. Well, that's my theory. Uh, I believe it was Diane who told me that. I think it was Diane Ritter. She told me that. All I usually use for jump rings is I use Loctite locking jump rings, like locking round jump rings, like these ones right here, locking round jump rings. <laughs> And they are more expensive, but I like them. And then oval jump rings because it just dis disperses the weight in a way that works with the design. I don't know if that makes sense. Like <laughs> it makes it makes total sense. I I I can see where your brain is going with that one. Then we'll go like this. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, and at this point you're just putting all your stuff, the stuffy stuff on here together. And if you don't like it the way that it's on there, then you just switch it up. No big deal. No rules. Tips. There's tips, but no rules. <laughs> I like that. Iris Apfel. Do you know who she is, Randy? Who? You know who Iris Apfel is? No. Okay. She is, a, she's an older woman. I think she's got to be in her 90s. She's a fashion icon, always known for being just like 
decked out in massive jewelry and really important. And one of the famous Iris Epfel quotes is, I don't have any rules because if I did, I would only be breaking them. Yeah, that, oh, that sounds like me. I'm even rebellious <laughs> against my sex. I believe it. You know, I was lucky though, like I had, um, I had a uh, grandma and my mom and they were always, they were always like, well, you can try that and it might not work and there might be consequences, but go ahead, do it. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, sometimes there were consequences and sometimes there wasn't. And I learned a lot of things, but they were never like, like, I don't know, nobody in my family was ever like, no, don't do that. They were never like that. And I, they were like, there, there's probably going to be consequences and you're going to have to deal with that. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. So I just kind of, I don't know, it's just like in this designing. And that's why I think I like designing because I don't, I can just do what I want. Anybody can really, you know. It's really nice about your family background. Um, and I, I know that was something that we wanted to talk about here was how well, you started beating your everything, but I think we've even got a, a more in-depth look at at just your upbringing, Randy, and your family, and how the different experiences and the people that are in our lives shape us to be who we are. Um, how we interact with other people to you know, just how we make our jewelry. <laughs> I, know, right? I feel like, well, you know, I'm also a counselor, so I get all you know into it. But I feel like jewelry making is very therapeutic for people uh you know and I'm a firm believer in art therapy and that whole aspect of it and but honestly like it just is something that makes people happy you get to produce something beautiful whatever it is and it's all you you like it you don't like it you rip it up you keep going whatever you do with it like it's it's a process and I think like as far as my family goes like this you know like the seed bead situation um, you know, seed beads are small, but they're like a representation. They're just a representation of like how it's kind of humbling to be like, seed beads can make super beautiful, amazing stuff in the world if you have the patience to work on it. And that's kind of always been like, I used to get really frustrated when I was younger and like doing looming projects and seed bead projects. Like I was peyote stitching at like six, you know? And I can do all of that, but then that's why I say, like when um, when I met Diane Ritter and she changed my world with all this other things, I was just like, huh, because I used to get really impatient, but now as an older adult, I realize, like um, you know, my grandmas and my aunts and everybody were saying those things about you know having patience, like it was more of a metaphor, you know what I mean, <laughs> more of a metaphor life lesson situation. Okay. I'm hung up. I'm just gonna cut this. That bothers you, don't look. All right, guys, are you with me? With you. Okay, here we go. We're all put together. I hope you guys can see all this. We're all put together. Wow. It's our pendants. Like I said, you can use any pendants. Maybe if you use a different color pendant, you paint your, you know, you paint a little rosewood, different color, you know, what else? So now what we're gonna do is we have to have a large gold jump ring. I hope I brought one over here. Oh yeah, I did. Two, we're gonna have two large gold jump rings. When you say large hole jump rings, you mean, is it a 10 milli? Mm, this guy is large. I would say he is, I don't even know, <laughs> like a 14 maybe? Really? Yeah, he's large. These are the kind that they usually use for like um, keychains and stuff. They're kind of heavy and they're mm -hmm. bigger. But I'm just going to put this here because this is what we're going to attach our, uh, leather too. So I'm put one on each side. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I put one on each side. See, look how big he is compared to, because I think these are, 
These are a 10 millimeter oval. Oh, I'm way off here. Yeah, and those are those are super big. I could tell how large it was when you had it sitting on the mat next to the ring on the chain. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty big. And so here's the easiest part now. I've got this beetle on. Um, what is this? One millimeter. This is uh, one millimeter Indian leather from Beetalon. Um, and you can get this on the website. So now you can do this part with just one. You could just do one, but I'm going to do it with two pieces just because I like the look of it. But you don't have to. You could use one piece. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out about. you don't need this much but probably like i would probably pull out 54 inches and you probably don't need that much so probably like 45 inches <laughs> do just do one one good arm's length a whole wingspan just do one of those and then do it again and then after you you do your wingspan just cut in half a wingspan for those that are listening in and that that may not know is when you hold the leather in one hand and you stretch it all the way out to the other hand, <laughs> wide, like about to fly away someplace, and yeah. then do that twice. So you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it once. You're gonna cut it. Then you're gonna do it again. And then once you're there, you're gonna add like you're gonna add three inches to your second wingspan. You don't have to. This is just for the tapering of the flowers. Okay, so now what we do is we take our first one. You're gonna fold it in half so it's absolutely even. Oh, I hear JT toes. I put up the baby gate. <laughs> <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is on the left hand side, this side, okay, we're just gonna do a lark's head knot. So you're gonna go in through the front with your little loop. If you've never done a lark's head. And then you're just going to put the tail, both sides of the tail through the little loop, pull it through. And then you're just gonna pull it like that. And you could hit this with a little dab of glue if you want, little Loctite gel glue or a little some some kind of don't put super glue on there though it's got to be gel or it's got to be uh hypo cement something like that now we're gonna go again do the same thing we're gonna fold this in half take our little loop go through on this same one do the same thing so now you should have two knots on your jump ring and four strands and all you're going to do is you're just going to run this around and you're going to take up your other large jump ring we put on and put all these tails now see we added that three inches so that's why they're not the same size put all these tails through there you just want to make sure that they are all even because this is the part that's gonna go around your neck and this can be as short or as long as you want. And you're just gonna just give it a little overhand tie. You're not gonna to to tie it tight or anything. You're just gonna give it a little overhand tie like so. And then you take, see, see, we didn't need all that. Then you're gonna take your little flowers. These are your, our four little flowers we have left. Our little bead caps from the strand. And we're going to utilize those. We're going to take each. We're going to take each of the little strands. And I'm going to kind of taper these in. So I'm just going to pull it up there and I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. And I'm going to put on the next one. And I'm going in through the top of the bead cap. So when it hangs, it looks like a little, kind of like a little bluebell flower or something. So cute. So then you're gonna to wanna to pull that one down you just made because you know I kind of don't want them all to hang in the same spot. So I either want it to be shorter or want it to be longer than that one. So make this one shorter. The beads don't fight, right? Right. <laughs> 
Actually, I'm gonna make this one longer. The reason I'm gonna make it longer is because you're not always gonna maybe have your, uh, you're maybe not always gonna have this knot tied right here exactly like this. Maybe you want the necklace to be shorter. It's meant to be adjustable. So I don't wanna make the flowers up there too short so then you can't get the length you want. I don't know if that makes sense. Dun, da, da. Okay. And you could also hit these little knots that you're making it with a little glue if you'd like. You don't have to. You could do that and then you would uh, pull the flower down over the glue so that it's, you know, kind of glued onto the knot. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. No rules. See? No rules. And then here's another fun thing you can do. Once you have this, you can either leave these long. I mean, you know, not too long. You're gonna wanna give them a little haircut here. Everything's in my way. You could either leave them long like this on the necklace, or you could go up and you could cut underneath each flower, which is what I'm gonna do. You're gonna cut an angle. I'm not gonna use my Dollar Tree scissor because that seems inappropriate. <laughs> And then once you do that, that's what you got. That is adorable. And we're all done. So let me give you the full effect here. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. And Randy, this is like, this necklace has so many different components. It has got so much cool to it. And this came together in an hour and a half. Yeah. It's really, really awesome. I want to show you what it looks like on. So I'm going to try to flip you over without losing the whole bit here. <laughs> to try it. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me put you over here. You didn't get that. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, I'm in the frame. I think I have. Okay. So, and then here's another one of those things where it's like when you're working on the mat and everything is flat, let's hurry up. Versus when you put it on. Can you see that? That looks great. So cool. So I like that, I like this leather portion because then if it's like you needed it to be shorter, you would just tie your knot up here a little shorter and then, you know, so it makes it adjustable. So there we go. It looks fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Randy, everyone, everyone here in the comments is given so many hearts and like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that smiley face because it's and it is it's just so stunning look at this guys and i love how you can put on whatever pendant you want mm -hmm. totally changes the look yeah you can put on whatever pendant you want you could use whatever color uh, patina paint you want you could use whatever beads you i don't know if i'm in the camera you can use whatever beads you want on this little guy I'm gonna call that guy like a star or something. He he looks like a star. He needs a name. That guy has got so much attitude. That piece right there. Hold it up one more time. Right? Attitude to the max. So cool. Yeah, and he looks cool on. And that's like part of it is like when it's hanging, then down here in the I don't know if you guys can see, but then they're not competing for space. Totally get it. Yeah. I like to connect mine with, um, I like to make all the little components and then connect them with jump rings just because then it moves around. Um, if you did them or you just linked each wire to each wire, you could do that too, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't have as much movement. So if you like it with not as much movement, you would do that. Yeah, this has got total, total flow to it. Yeah. So the moral of this story is being a mixed media artist means that it takes more than an hour. <laughs> the moral of the story is that mixed media is 
totally so cool, guys. Like we just watched Randy. Let's 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 just recap real quick here. Okay, so we started with Randy patina painting the wooden links. That was awesome. Then you did that really funky half wire wrapped wooden link with like half of it was spun with wire. Yeah, this one. That one. This one. That one is yes. Cool. Yes. <laughs> and then Randy took seed beads and wrapped the seed beads around another link. This one. And then what was the next one? Oh, then was like Nobby Nelly over here. <laughs> Star design. Yep. And then Randy put together so the rest, she used the rest of the piece from that strand to make wire wrapped loops and then connect the whole thing with jump rings. And that was it. Like such a, it looks so involved. The necklace but really, when you break all the steps down, it, it is easy and so, so cool, Randy Brown. Look how these are going to look on a necklace, all the star ones. Yeah, or like as a pair of earrings oh, as an earring yeah oh yeah <laughs> i'm like well yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other cool thing about making components so you can take all these components like randy was saying sometimes she'll make components and then she'll save them for a late uh, a later date to turn them into you could make all your components and turn them into a necklace you could do a bracelet or or earrings or whatever or a keychain or or what have you because no rules <laughs> no rules no the moral of today's story is no rules that's so awesome randy thank you so much for coming on and sharing your no rules attitude here with us on jjb Celebrity spotlight this is amazing yay well thank you for having me i hope you guys enjoyed the project we will have the replay out on the Jesse James Eads blog later this evening. If you are a subscriber to our newsletter, you'll be able to do that in your inbox later today. Randy Brown is on YouTube every Wednesday with a fresh project featuring Jesse James Eads. So make sure you go onto YouTube and search Thunder Force Descendant. You will find Randy there. She's got all kinds of good stuff there, including stuff from JJB. So thank you, Randy, for bringing us into your design room and your design theory. It's so awesome to see you create with our things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a good day and I will be back at some point in time. You'll be back. <laughs> thank you, Randy. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming on in the morning for us. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> All right. We'll do an afternoon show next time. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>